Hello and welcome to the Catchmark Technologies All About Technology podcast. Uh, this is episode one. I am Jeff Burrell. I'm your host. And with me today, I've got Bob Yonkman and Phil Uguma. How are we doing? Good. Good, good. Yeah. Thank you for being the guinea pigs. Um, so what we're trying to do here is uh, just talk a little bit about what we do here at Catchmark um, in our tech space and um, get some different uh, viewpoints from the guys on our tech team of what they like about supporting our customers um, and maybe even some things that they don't like. We'll withhold the name, so protect the guilty. Um, first, uh, introductions. Bob, if you can just tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, I'm Bob Yonkman. I'm the tech and web lead here in the Whitehall office. How long have you been doing tech stuff? Oh, man. Uh, four years here, but probably 25-ish total. So it started when you were like six? Uh, yeah, just about. All right. <laughs> Phil? Uh, my name is Phil Bugama. I am the tech support lead in the Grand Rapids office. i uh, been doing tech support for... 15 years or so now. Started at uh, in college with the supporting the colleges that I went to and then um, at another company and then at Catchmark. So total about 15 years. All right. Um, myself, I do have a tech background. Did about 20 years of support. Um, don't get to do that stuff anymore. Now I have to do all the fun business leadership management stuff. And um, as you guys are well aware of, keep you guys in line, which is a full-time job. Um, let's see. So tech support, um, it is a, a big part of what we do here at Catchmark and we, we try to, uh, be problem solvers and take care of all our customers the best that we can. Um, why don't you give me a, uh, give me a little overview of some of the things that, that we support and do for our customers. Yeah. Most of our work is, uh, supporting companies doing, tech support for the user base, for their devices, um, everything from a desktop computer that someone uses, a laptop, to any network devices, uh, switches, firewalls, uh, anything in the server closet. Um, when I interviewed, uh, I don't know if it was you or Brent that said it to me, but we'll support anything that you know takes electricity. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, and if it's something we haven't seen before, which, which I have, um, you know, we figure it out, and and we're problem solvers. That's that's what we do. Anything to add, Bob? No, that's uh, yeah. Hate to see that takes a uh, takes a little bit. Big of over <laughs> overview summary of what <laughs> yeah. we do. Right. We'll support we'll support just about anything. I think one of the things that, um, based on the customers I've talked to, that's different about Catchmark is our our willingness to be flexible. Um, a lot of times. Um, Managed service providers like ourselves will um, try and do all of the support of everything. And um, there's some companies where they may not need all of that support. Uh, they may have some internal staff to take care of pieces, but they only want um, Catchmark to help with some of the other pieces. Uh, how do you guys feel about that approach? I think it's difficult at times when you say Bob. Uh, sometimes, but I've become pretty accustomed to working yeah. alongside these vendors for situations. As long as we're communicating properly with them, it, it hasn't it's been all about problem. customer support. As long as yeah. we we get them what they need, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, from a support standpoint, it can get kind of sticky. But we'll we'll give the customers what they want. I manage that downtime, huh. <laughs> right? Yeah, the communication is the key part, and I think we we really do a good job at making sure that we're doing that as as needed with all the customers. When we, um, when you run into problems and um, you've got frustrated customers, obviously that is not the ideal situation, but um, what are some of your approaches with, with just trying to keep the c customers calm and not have them throwing their computers across the room or hanging up on you? I think some of that is just is, is helped by our approach to customer service. Uh, we generally have a tech assigned to a company, so they're already familiar with that company and and the users. So it's easier to to help uh, bring that situation um, that boil down and uh, get that stuff fixed for them. Yeah, and a lot of users when they get frustrated and they're clicking <laughs> on the phone, they're they're not really 
you know, complaining to you. They're complaining about their device, about the issue they're having, and they just need a soundboard to bounce off of. So um, I'm happy to be that soundboard. Uh, it's not always fun, but uh, um, in the end, we'll get the customer taken care of and, and the issue resolved. Putting you on the spot here, but do you have any, like, real bad situations that come to mind with a customer where they, like, they were really upset and you had to talk them back off the ledge? Yeah, I mean, when I, when I was a young tech, I had... Uh, uh, this was before Catchmark, but I had a user yelling at me that that uh, the printer wasn't working, and I had nothing to do with the setup or normal management of the printer. This is when I was working out of college, and it was a, a instructor, and I just yeah, I'm a young college student being yelled at by an instructor because her printer won't work. So even then, uh, just stood there, listened to her, and said, "Okay, we'll get your problem resolved." And the important thing is to stay calm and and uh, uh, you know, escalate it where it needed to be, where which is what happened in that situation. What about you, Bob? Gosh, nothing really comes to mind, but but half the time it's always just something goofy, anyways, right? It's just uh, something small that triggered it and went off. I had an experience. Uh, I did support for a bunch of production facilities. My previous employer and they, um, I supported the servers. And these were um, automotive suppliers and uh, a lot of just-in-time shipping. So, like, during the day, any downtime was killer. And I needed to reboot a server. And each of the different locations we supported had a a three-digit number code to identify the site. And um, I thought I was on a server for site, like, 580, and I was really on 582 and rebooted the wrong one. And... uh, that got real awkward real fast. Um, took the plant down, had the uh, the OEM screaming at everybody at the plant. Nobody could explain what was happening. And I'm like, well, I, it wasn't me. I'm working on... Oh, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> so not good. Um, what about um, any situations where um, y- you thought it was a situation... Uh, going to be an absolute nightmare and a customer is going to be super upset with the the message or the answer that you gave them. And it turned out where they were much more understanding. I can't think of anything off the top of my head specific, but um, we do have, I have a philosophy and we do have the the philosophy here that um, if you, you know, if you make a mistake or something, you you own up to it. You own um, ownership of, you know, what you're doing, what's been done and it's better to address things early. And my experience with that has been um, very positive. That customers um, they don't like hearing, you know, that maybe a mistake was made or that something was impacted that wasn't expected. But the communication piece is key. That letting the customer know, hey, this happened. We didn't expect it to happen. We're working to get everything resolved, and to communicate that early and often. Um, when those sign kind of situations come up. Kind of like dealing with your kids, like when you know they're lying to you and you oh, just yeah. want them to be honest. Oh, yeah. I got a, yeah. my five-year-old right now. She is um, she she's very creative with her lies right now. So that's that's an interesting... They only get more creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think we have enough time to talk through that today, but... Um, so yeah, dealing, dealing with luck. customers is dealing with kids sometimes. Yeah. Very similar. Um, but you're right on the the honesty part. Like in that situation I spoke of with the servers, once I realized that I was the one that made the mistake, I explained exactly what happened. Like, yep, it, this is on me. I was on the wrong server. I can't change what I did, but I can tell you going forward, I'm going to pay closer attention. And every day forward, I was much more aware and alert on what I was was doing so I didn't cause that to happen again. We had a, a seasonal business up here where, that we did a little bit of networking work on uh, last summer, and we had an instance on a, a busy Friday night where they called us and said everything was down. So I said, oh, well, man, it, it, hopefully it's not our networking gear. We right. got out there, did some troubleshooting. It turned out to be they never paid their internet bill. <laughs> I, I remember that. Yeah, that was a, a, a couple hours, we'll say, yeah, of your nice. evening spent. A little bit. That was a nice mm-hmm. Friday night. Yep. At least it wasn't your fault. No. Right. Um, thankfully, that, you know, we're pretty fortunate that 
you know, when you're, when you're in the, the tech industry, you're kind of always on the clock, but, um, we're pretty fortunate with our, our users with their schedules and, um, we don't get tied up doing too much stuff outside of maybe maintenance or some project work in the evenings for the most part. Right. Yeah. The types of business we generally work with to keep a uh, pretty normal hours, I'd say. Right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, the, our approach with support here at Catchmark and, um, how we, we try to differentiate ourselves, um, from, from the competition out there. Um, Bob, you touched on it a little bit, um, as far as like assigning a tech. So explain that, um, in a little bit more detail for us. Well, we've got two offices. We've got one here in Whitehall and we've got one in Grand Rapids, uh, Phil, primarily runs with the Grand Rapids office, and I'm here in Whitehall. Um, we've got two techs here, two techs in the Grand Rapids office, and they're each assigned to our companies in those areas. So they get familiar with those environments, and they work with those customers day in and day out. And we also have backups set up for these companies, of course. But they get to know the environment and the customers, and, and uh, their employees get to know us much better. And it's much easier to troubleshoot issues when we're, we know what we're walking into than yeah. just a, a randomly assigned ticket. Yeah, and I think the other piece that's important, too, is um, we've all been on the, the other side of that support where you call for help and you get that level one person who has absolutely no idea how to solve your problem. They're just taking down your information. Going through the script. Going through the script, putting it in the <laughs> system, and somebody else is going to call you back. Um, we, with the process as that we have, avoid that for the most part um, with with having the the techs assigned to customers. And um, all of our techs are level, level two, level three people. So most of the time, you're, the person you're dealing with first is the one who's going to resolve that issue, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we do a lot of cross training too. And so, uh, if someone else needs to step into a customer they haven't worked with before, you know, they're they are at that level where they can help. And um, it's great too that that we all come from different backgrounds and, and uh, uh, histories with tech support. So um, our our chat support is full of questions. Has anyone seen this before? You know, some issue they hadn't seen, and um, just picking everyone's brain and figuring things out together sometimes that can be fun Mm -hmm. um so with my background i was you know in large corporate america it tends to get pretty siloed so most of my knowledge is in the server space and in that space that meant i didn't do desktop support i didn't do networking support um and didn't even have access to the the tools or to the devices. With with the support that we provide our customers, you guys, the whole team really has to be generalist, right? Um, Jack of all trades. Yeah. yeah. To some extent, you got to be able to know, you know, a little bit about everything. Explain to me why you prefer the generalist versus the you know the siloed approach in. Um, and why you enjoy, you know, what you do, if you enjoy it. <laughs> well, well, for me, it's nice to know every level of the customer's technology. So when I've been in that siloed environment before, and when an issue comes up and you're not certain what it is, like maybe you have the, the you know, user desktop view, and that's, that's usually what I had, but you, you, you don't work with the servers, and you're not certain if it's really a desktop issue or a server issue, um, you can only troubleshoot what you have access to and, and what you, you can do. In the, our approach, the customer contact, the, the tech assigned to the, to the customer, we see all of the technology of the customer. We can, we can support the desktops, we can support the users, the applications, everything. And so you, you're involved with every layer of the customer's technology and you have the tools and uh, the knowledge to support whatever it may be um, through, you know, just troubleshooting. Mm-hmm. A big part of why that works though is our documentation process. Um, I know a lot of IT companies maybe skip a little bit here, but everything we do is documented. Um, all the devices we cover are documented. 
all the systems we cover are documented. So it's it's much easier for an, a tech to step in and start working on a problem when we already have all that information on hand. And tech people love spending time documenting everything, <laughs> right? Yeah, like yeah, anything I can't get to get my a, guys to stop. Right, anything to get away from uh, from working on tickets. <laughs> Yeah, I remember working. Someone was someone was on vacation. Uh, one of the techs was on vacation. We got a call from one of the customers, and they said, "I can't get another VPN." I've never seen their VPN before. I didn't even know what it was. Nice to just pull up our documentation, and it says they're using this VPN. This is how you connect. And so I was able to guide the customer through. So this is a person who has been using their VPN, their company VPN, before was having an issue with it. Uh, me not knowing anything was able to look at our documentation and say, oh, this is the issue right here, yeah. and, and guide them along and get them in. doesn't always work out that way, doesn't though, right? doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes when you're on vacation, you get phone calls, you know, <laughs> and that's your own fault because uh, <laughs> we tend to document it properly. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say, uh, you know, things don't get documented well all the time, but uh, uh, when it does, that's, that is a good feeling. <laughs> uh, back to Jeff's original question with the jack-of-all-trades, it tech's always changing. I right. don't know if you can be a specialist in this for very long until it changes. So we look for people that keep their minds open and, and are open to learning all these different technologies and fields. Yeah, and when I started, uh, my first tech job was, was the one that I had with that company for 20 years, and I didn't know anything else. So I'm like, oh, this is just how it works. Like, you're the server guy. And then I've been with Cashmark for five years now, and when I first came over, I was still doing some tech support and hands-on stuff and was like, well, wait a minute, where's who's the networking guy? Because it's not me, right? Well, it, it's me. Um, and I wish I would have been in a position, you know, with a company like Catchmark earlier on because it really does broaden your your scope of knowledge and give you an opportunity to to kind of nerd out and learn more stuff than just servers. You're not going to get bored. No, that's no. true. Um, one story about the documentation, um, I was on the, the wrong side of that where I didn't, uh, record a password at one time. <clears throat> customer went down. I was the only one that, uh, had worked with this customer, had the password in my head, which was in Punta Cana at the time. Mm. So I got a call from Brent asking me in the middle of the day, um, while I was sunbathing and staying hydrated, what the password was. And a um, couple of margaritas deep already. Maybe, yeah. That took some serious like focus in in <laughs> thought. Like here I am thinking I'm on vacation and enjoying my time away and knowing that a customer's down and they're gonna be down until I think of this password. Like that that was a, a pressure moment. But I pulled through and I use that, you know, as we we bring on new people to our team as an example of what you don't want to happen. You don't want to be on that guy, that side of it and you know, let your team down and, um, and let your, your customers down as well. I tell my guys it's vacation insurance. <laughs> Get the yes. information in there. <laughs> it is. And it, it's hard too in tech because you, you do feel like you're always on the clock, as we mentioned. And you, when you're on vacation, we do really want you to be on vacation. We don't want to bug you. And... Um, thankfully, I think we have a really good team who there's there's nobody where it's like, well, if I document everything, Catchmark's not going to need me. Mm -hmm. They can just get rid of me. No, if you document everything, we can allow you to focus on other things to grow and, and help out. Um, but yeah, there's still things that slip through the cracks and oh, yeah. we just hold people accountable. Um, so talking a little bit more about, um, some of the differences with us. So we talked about how we have the, the, um, level two, three support and how we try to assign text specifically to customers. Um, how about the, the focus we put on, um, the, the ease of communication for our customers. So obviously it is not at the top of their list of things that they want to do to call tech support or to open up a, a ticket with us. Um, how do we make that process as, as painless as possible for our customers? 
Well, it's usually an email or a phone call. <laughs> I'd right. say, yeah, while we prefer the uh, <clears throat> the help desk email, um, a lot, some users still call in. We, we're we open to text communication, phone calls. Um, phone calls are still a big part of our business. Um, just working with users remotely is so much easier that way. Yeah, a lot, a lot of remote users nowadays too. And um, so you, you, you have that trouble too of, not just working with someone who is, you know, employed and, you know, they're doing their job, but they're also working from home and using their home internet. <clears throat> and that's, that's been a, another big obstacle. But back to your original question, yeah, yeah <laughs> they can, um, you know, we have a general number line that they can call. So, um, you know, all my customers, they have, they have my direct number. But um, if I'm not available, they can call the general line and get uh, any, any of the other techs. Um, and, you know, usually someone is able to at least assist and get the ball rolling if they can't uh, solve the problem directly. Or get that call over to their rep, too. Get the call over to get the rep. Get that taken care of, yeah. Not being available. Mm-hmm. How much has, has your role changed um, since the pandemic with, like you mentioned, Phil, about so many people working from home now and the dynamic of, oh, well, they're not just in an office environment where it's a controlled network. Now they're at their home and... Who knows what they have for a uh, internet provider? Oh yeah, Change, changed a lot. I mean, I came from a company that we were we were in one of two offices, and you know my desk was there, and you can get up, walk around. Someone says, send submits a ticket, you get up and walk over to their desk, and and you know fix the issue. Now it's someone submits a ticket, and you're you're emailing them or calling them and saying. I, I think I'm going to have to look at this. Can we schedule a time where I can mm-hmm. remote in? Um, so using remote tools, especially since the pen- pandemic, that's been a big, big change for me. Yeah. What, what if I told you we got to start making house calls? House calls. <laughs> I mean, be happy to. Yeah, right. Don't, don't mind all the dogs and cats, um, but my office is over here. <laughs> A big part of that was just our normal customer service. Um, During the pandemic, a lot of people were stressed out, and it was we couldn't obviously get into their houses to help them. So a lot of that was remote support and walking the user through it and just having patience with everyone and making sure we get the job done. Do you think that those experiences and and what people had to get used to during the pandemic has um, fast-forwarded and now helped make your guys' job a little bit easier? Yeah, I think it definitely opened up a lot of users' eyes to the technology behind of behind their work and how they get their job done. Right, because, I mean, obviously, if, if there's an issue, everybody would love to have the tech right there on site next to them every single time, but that's just uh, not a, an easy model to follow. No. Um, so Yeah, what, another technology change that occurred with one of my customers was when I started with them, they were printing a lot of paper, a lot. I'm talking reams a day, and that was their process, and there there wasn't any need to it. They they would print it, make some changes, write up some things on the paper, rescan it back in. And I, I, had, there was a I had been saying for years, there's no reason for you to print that much. You know, there's digital ways to this. <laughs> Fell in deaf ears. Pandemic happens. Not everyone's going to have a printer. And they force the customers to say, "Hey, we need to, we need to change our process. We need to do this digitally because we're not going to buy a printer for everyone right. uh, to have at home." So um, that that is another way that technology has changed because of the pandemic, for sure. And that so elaborate on that a little bit more too is um, as we're providing support in, and we see things like that where maybe there's a process that could be improved or maybe a technology leverage that the customers don't know. Um, how, how do you handle a situation like that? Yeah. I have a customer right now that, uh, they, they came to us and they said, Hey, we, we have this problem where when we are doing new hires, steps are getting missed. We have this checklist that we follow, but steps are getting missed. People aren't remembering. We don't, the, the management doesn't know where we're at in the process. How can you help? And so you brought this to me, Jeff, and I sat down with the customer and said, I think we have a solution for you mm-hmm. and got the requirements. And now we have a whole workflow that when a new hire happens, the manager will trigger 
it'll put in the, the user information and it'll trigger this, this workflow and it goes every step of the way. It goes to everyone in the organization that needs to do something for that new hire from HR, from uh, tech needs, from security, and uh, any, anything, uh, any user in the organization that needs to touch on the, the new person coming on. So it's automatically a, sending out communication. Automatically sends out communication, right. say, hey, this person's coming on. We need this, this, and this done. When you're done, you know, click this button. And then it goes to the next step. Um, and uh, feedback I've heard is really good so far. They're just putting it into use now, so I'm excited to see um, uh, how they use it and, and uh, um, any feedback they provide. But I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I think... I think it's it's really well thought out and put together, and you know you spend a lot of time with the customer getting it fine tuned, and um, I guess that's kind of the way I feel is that's kind of the one of the fun parts to your guys' job, right? Like not saying that solving the problems of our customers aren't fun, but like the there's more to just doing tickets all day every day. You guys get to help solve problems like that and work on different solutions and. Um, so solve those types of problems for customers. Um, At the end we, of the day, we're really just trying to make their business run more efficiently, right? <laughs> and to my knowledge, and not a lot of tech companies will will delve into these areas. It's a little outside the the tech realm, I would say, when you get into business processes. Yeah, I would agree. Mm-hmm. In future episodes, we'll talk more about that um, as well. But you know, we try to be almost a, I guess, a, a one stop shop when it comes to tech. Um, and if there's something that we don't know how to do, chances are we're going to be able to figure it we'll out. Figure it out. Yeah. Or we have the, the right contacts to, to help with the solution um, and get it resolved. That jack of all trades hire. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, so what? let's talk about a couple. Why don't you give me some examples um, of what you really enjoy about working with our customers and or working at Catchmark? What we really enjoy. I enjoy problem solving. I enjoy that feeling when you have a problem that's just been nagging you and, and the customer is, you know, it's an unusual, it's an unusual issue. I like the unusual issues and, and problem solving and trying to find that final solution and the, moment of victory i found it it's this right you know um when you when those google searches just come up empty that's that's always that's yeah. dreaded moment but when you sit down and figure it out for yourself that that it's the most rewarding thing i think you shut it down and go from, go home right like yeah, shut it down <laughs> i'm out we'll be back tomorrow drop mouse yep <laughs> but sometimes you need that moment to think you just yeah go for walking no i'd say that's great coming in and being the hero right uh, that yeah, here, here again. Yeah. What about you, Bob? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's that problem solving. It's that, and just the breadth of everything that we handle. It's never boring. <laughs> it's always yeah. something new. We, if we, we're seeing repeat problems, we're usually looking at a way to shut that down. Yeah. We, we don't want to see something more than once. You mean we don't always have all the tickets resolved? <laughs> not, not right away. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the cute like or ticket count is sometimes not. Sometimes you have to dig in and uh, do a little research. Gotcha. So the, you're telling me right now the ticket count isn't zero? Oh, no. 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 We got, we got always moving. Okay, that's good. Since this is our first tech podcast, do you want to give a little history behind the tech services department? Yeah, that's that's a great idea. Um, maybe you should you should be the host. We'll switch spots here. I didn't even think about that, but um, we have been doing tech support uh for about 12 years now as Catchmark prior to that. Um, we were part of a, another group that um, it's a lot of really large dairy farms and um, a lot of back-end business services in finance and all that stuff that tech doesn't really fit into. So um, they decided to split Catchmark or split the tech out became Catchmark. Um, Brent was part of that, had a couple people on staff at the time and um, supported the the main customer and the dairy farms and um, 
had some good success there, had some interest from um, other companies outside that group, just through word of mouth, and uh, started to expand probably five, six years ago um, to other companies. Um, When I started five years ago, there were six of us for the whole company. And now counting our our part-time people, we've got like 25 people. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, we do a lot more than just tech now, but tech is where Cashmark was started. Um, It's it's evolved quite a bit um, with additional solutions and and services that we provide um, because tech's always changing. And, you know, we want to make sure that we can um, stay up to date and current and support whatever's out there. So, um, yeah, we, we support a wide range of customers, wide range of customers. So we decided to start with, with, uh, uh, you know, one office and, and all the dairy farms and technologies yep. there. And, and now uh, we cover, um, people in manufacturing mm-hmm. offices and, um, some from large, you know, you know, hundred plus and to small where there's just, well, who wants their smallest office? Well, five oh, or maybe four to five four users. To yeah. users. And, you know, it's great going into that sort of environment because an office like that, they can't they can't afford, you know, usually a, a, a on-site tech person. So well, you, you tech guys are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, they, they can't, you know, generally afford, you know, a, a tech person on-site all the time. So it's great that we can provide that service to them at, at a fraction of what you know one salary would be for for somebody, um, and you know still have that same feeling that we work for them because our our resolution times are, you know, I, I would say comparatively pretty low. Like yeah, I think so. We get most most of our the majority of our tickets for sure done in in under a day. Um, so almost to the point where it it, um, it gets us in trouble. When, you know, we have SLAs with all their customers. And if, let's say the SLA is three days and it takes us two and a half, some customers are like, it's about time you solved it, Phil. <laughs> Jeez, it took you two and a half days. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we did start mainly with the agriculture industry. Um, through the years, we've realized that it's not as much the industry that matters, but it's the the type of customer. Um, we want to be a partner with them. We want to... We want to help them uh, grow their business and be efficient, and not be looked at as just a you know just the tech guys or just the tech vendors. So. Yeah, customers that are interested in making tech work for their business and to, to grow their business with tech. Like, yeah. Then so we do have a Grand Rapids office, a Whitehall office. Um, we don't have to be close to all our customers. I mean, we support customers in Minnesota, Minnesota, yeah, oh, in Ohio. Ohio. My um, favorite state. Yeah, I mean, my, you know, the customer I primarily support right now, they've got, uh, you know, their offices are in Minnesota and Michigan, but they have uh, users all across the country from Georgia, Colorado, Arizona. So I guess you could say we support customers across the country. They have right. users and support staff across the world, technically. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. Appreciate the information you've uh, you've shared. Hopefully, everybody who's checking this podcast out has enjoyed it. Uh, we will be having future episodes um, as well. So I'm gonna sign off. Jeff Burrell with Catchmark, um, and that's our All About Technology podcast. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, guys.